meeting the Amherst Township Trustees called to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Abraham? Here. Lynch? Here. Yerig? Yes. Kish. Okay, I have the meeting minutes from the November 28th, 2023 regular meeting of the Emmers Township Trustees. The meeting was called to order at 7.03 p.m. by Lynch. Pledge to the flag, row call Abraham Lynch, Yurig, and Kish were present. Also in attendance, Case Marsh, G. Lynch, Morgan, Roscoe. Roscoe. Roscoe, thank you. A. Peterson, P. Peterson, O. Alcadar, and K. Davey. 11 6 23, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Urig. Move to approve the no November 14th, 2023 regular meeting minutes as corrected. All ayes. 11 7 23, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Urig. Move to approve the financial reports and payment of items on the payment listing, which includes ARPA fund expenditures as specified in documents provided by the fiscal officer. All ayes. 11 8 23, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Urich, moved to approve that the October 2023 credit card account transaction detail has been reviewed per policy and is accepted as presented subject to investigation. All eyes. The fiscal officer noted that the December payment to Buckeye Bank, the rental property loan with the Buckeye, with the December payment to Buckeye Bank, the rental property loan will be paid off. Trustee Lynch welcomed everyone and asked if anyone had any items to bring before the board. A. Peterson spoke on a complaint that she has filed regarding a noise complaint on Cobblestone Drive. Omar al Qadar from Easy Waste Services attended the meeting, introducing themselves as a potential Amherst Township waste hauling service, and they have placed a bid for the waste hauling and recycling consortium contract. Under correspondence, Trustee Lynch noted two items. One, Lorain County's Township Association Christmas parties, December 21st at the New Russia Township Hall, and we typically spend $50 for a door prize from an Amherst Township business. All agreed to continue. We discussed at the last meeting the county commissioners inquiring about a potential ban of large wind and solar facilities in the unincorporated areas of the county. This will be discussed at the Lorain County Township Association meeting on January 18th, 2024 in Grafton Township. OTA Winter Conference being held February 7th through 9th, 2024 in Columbus. OTA annual subscription for training was not approved by all townships, so we will have to pay the full cost of $250. Fiscal officer will apply for the 2023 Moore grant through Otarma to cover the cost of this subscription and the OTA Winter Conference registration. Trustee Lynch noted a copy of the proposal for Life Care Ambulance cost for a three-year term for the Sandstone Joint Ambulance District. A final contract will be put together for approval from the Sandstone Joint Ambulance District. The contractor will keep the same service we have today, and each community will pay based on the number of calls. Amherst Township's portion will be $38,371 per year. It is yet to be determined if payment will be annual, quarterly, or monthly. Under reports, Fire Inspector, Trustee Lynch noted that the upcoming newsletter would contain information on a grant for small business energy audits that NOPEC has released. NOPEC secured federal funds to support small businesses through a new NOPEC Small Business Energy Audit Program. Small businesses in NOPEC communities are now eligible to receive grants of up to 100% of the costs associated <coughs> with securing an energy audit. For more information, visit nopec.org slash energy audit. Zoning Inspector, Trustee Urig reported that he is currently working on contacting the architects within our area here in Amherst Township to determine if any are willing to work with the township on site plan reviews. Under roads, parks, and cemeteries, road superintendent Smarsh reported regular maintenance and finishing the leaves. Snow removal took place today, presented a bid for the yard waste grinding, looked at a January date for that to take place. Trustee, no, Trustee Lynch provided several grant funding opportunities for funding of yard waste management to offset the operational cost, which were provided to Trustee Yurig last year for evaluation. Trustee Yurig will look into other grant dollars that might be a possibility for help in covering this cost. Trustee Lynch also noted that the Lorain County Stormwater District will have a mini-grant program for 2024. He asked that Linda and Kevin work on getting two 2024 mini-grant applications completed for street sweeping and catch basins. Kudos were also given to both Kevin and Linda that OPCW, OPWC Round 38 Amherst Township Middle Ridge and Moss Canyon projects were approved. 
Complaints are being handled by the designated individual. Unfinished business, Trustee Yurig noted that there are still three lights that have been reported as not working and they have not been fixed and he will follow up on those again. Also, the high pressure sodium light costs were set up on the old program and are grandfathered in at a lower rate. The LED replacements are not included in that program and the rates for those are higher. Trustee Lynch noted that the Waste Hauling Consortium sent out an email on 11-28-23 of all the companies who bid on the contract and asked the other trustees to check their emails for the notice. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, December 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Amherst Township Hall. This will also be our end of year 2023 and 2024 organizational meeting. 11-9-23, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham. Move to enter into executive session at 8.07 p.m. according to ORC sections 121.22 G3 to discuss disputes involving the public body that are subject of pending or imminent court action and 121.22 G1 for discussions regarding the hiring, promotion, demotion, or dismissal of employees. Roll call all eyes. 11.10.23, motion by Lynch, second by Urig. Move to return from executive session at 8.50 p.m. All eyes. 11, 11, 23, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Yurik to adjourn at 8.51 p.m. All eyes. Okay, are there any changes or corrections to the November 28th meeting minutes? And if not, can I have a motion to approve as presented? So moved. Second. Yurik? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Okay, then you have in front of you the payment listing for the month so far, um, this includes the year-end payment of uh, the BZA and the Zoning Commission that time of year. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll stop at that one. Our revenue summary. Year to date is one million six hundred eighty nine thousand forty one dollars and eighty one cents. Right, David? Yeah. And our expenses. We're one million one hundred eighty nine thousand five eight hundred fifty six dollars and seven cents. Then I also have the credit card, but that's the next one. Came pretty close to budget on the revenue side there, Chris. And then is the uh, $50 Iconium network, did that come out of the ARPA fund? Yes. Last one. Okay, are there any other questions on the financial statements or the payment listing? If not, then I'm going to, um, we'll do the financial statements first then, Chris. I'm okay. going to make a motion to approve the financial reports and the payments of the items on the payment listing, which includes ARPA fund expenditures as specified in the documents provided by the fiscal officer. Second. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Yuri? Yes. And that's 12-2? That is 12-2. As far as the credit card statement, then I'll move to approve that the uh, November 2023 credit card account transaction detail has been reviewed for policy and is accepted as presented subject to investigation. Second. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Yuri? Let me, let me see the credit card real quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I vote yes. 
Our did Lecrae I call? Card. I called it. Did I not call? Yeah, you called Eric and I said, wait, wait a second. Oh, I okay, want to try and look at this. Yes. That's 12-3. Oh, yes, 12-3. All right. And you have in your packet a prepared resolution, and uh, Chris had sent that out earlier to you for the temporary uh, budget, which would be good through uh, the end of March of 2024. Without reading through the details here, unless somebody wants to read off every fund, is I'm going to make a motion that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of the Board of Trustees of Amherst Township that during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024, the following sums being the same are hereby set aside and temporarily appropriated for the several purposes for which the expenditures are to be made for and during the fiscal year as follows. And then it's just a copy of. Uh, the appropriated uh, funds on the form that's provided by the um, Lorain County Auditor and the Tax Budget Commission and <coughs> Tax Budget Commission that the Amherst Township Fiscal Officer shall provide the township budget on such forms or in such format as required by Lorain County Auditor. I'm not going to read the rest, which is all boilerplate, so that'll be my motion. I'll second it. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Gary? Yes. Four. Twelve four. <clears throat> is there anything else there, Chris? That is all I have. Okay. The, the next item on here, and we're, we're still covering the business here for the end of year for 2023, is um, I had mentioned at the last meeting about the uh, Sandstone Joint Ambulance District uh, only received the one bid for ambulance service, and that was from Life Care. And Life Care's proposal does include a $183,000 payment uh, by the district. Since the district itself doesn't have any funds, each individual community that makes up the district, being the city of Amherst, the village of South Amherst, Amherst Township, uh, must make the payments. Uh, for that service, and that's included in the agreement. It's also, there's, uh, was, the agreement was modified since the one you would have seen at the last meeting. Uh, there are actually uh, two places in the modification. Uh, the one we were aware would be necessary, and they're both related. And that was in paragraph 2.3. Uh, previous to this, it had indicated that the payment would be made on the first of the month, which would have meant we were prepaying for the service. Even though that might not be a showstopper in the past, we've been told by the state and the prosecutor that we really should pay after the service is provided. So the contract was modified that the payment will be on the 30th day of each month. Obviously, there are some days that have 31 days and some that one that has only 28. And then as far as specifying the exact amount, uh, which will then serve as the invoice, also a Schedule A was added to the end of uh, the agreement. And the way that's apportioned right now was based on the historical call volumes uh, within the district for each one of the three communities. And then it was apportioned out as far as what their payment would be. Uh, and it will be, Chris, will be on a monthly basis, because at the time, at, um, you know, there was a question as to the frequency of the payment. So it will now be definitely monthly on the 30th of each month, um, with obviously the exception of February. And since this spells it out through the three years of the contract, 2024 is a leap year, so February payment will be February 29th on that year and then February 28th in the succeeding two years. Uh, Chris, I know prior to the meeting you had just one other question, and it specifies the payment to be through uh, ACH payments to Life Care. And as we noted before, in that is um, that's a. And I know Life Care hasn't gotten back to you, but Life Care needs to give you the proper information to set that up, and also to avoid then, as you've indicated, paying any additional fee to a Huntington Bank, which serves as the holder of the township's current checking Correct. account. Okay, but other than that, nothing else has changed from the agreement that you guys have seen in the past. And so what this is, is this a, a resolution uh, ratif uh, 
uh, ratification, acceptance, of emergency medical service agreement between the Sandstone Joint Ambulance District and Life Care. And again, the main reason, reason we're approving that is because the funds actually will flow directly from uh, Amherst Township to Life Care on the billing versus sending them to the district board and then having them put it out because they don't have their own separate financial system or auditing and that would just add undue expenses. And with the Ohio Revised Code 505.71 indicates that the maximum term of the agreement is three years. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we can put an annual extension on that afterwards. And uh, so the two present, two options that Life Care gave was a three-year and a five-year contract, but the three-year is the only one that we can accept for code. So I really have no intention of reading this unless someone else wants to. I'd just really like to make the motion uh, the ratification acceptance of emergency medical service agreement between the Sandstone Joint Ambulance District and Life Care Ambulance Incorporated. So that would be my motion. I'll second that. I'll let you make that motion, Denny. Is there a rep? Is there any Lynch? other discussion? Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric. Abstain. <clears throat> and what is that? 12-5. I see on the agenda under E3, Chris, you'll see in the wording there, I neglected to edit that text. Um, so you'll have to put in the ratification acceptance of the agreement. If you look at the agenda on E3, I actually ended up copying in from E2. Not sure how I did that, but... You know how you tend to use the agenda then for recording your minutes? Look at E3. Yes. You see where it's it's the authorized sandstone joint yes. ambulance district, and then but underneath the motion, approved financial statement. Oh, that's, oh, I get you. That's incorrect. Yeah. Okay. So you can just cross that out. Okay. okay. All right. We'll move on to uh, correspondence, Chris. I have none. Okay, David. I have nothing to bring forward at this point. Nothing. Danny? Nothing. If I do, I'm just going to run through these quick here. I did receive by mail from NOPEC in regards to the community uh, sponsorship grant. It will be, again, $1,500. I forwarded that to everyone. Linda will get uh, um, the grant application put together. Again, I assume we're going to be able to use the yard waste um, uh, dumpster day events. It was interesting this year, I just received yesterday, which and I forwarded to Linda, the actual email. And years past, it's the opposite. I usually get the email from Chuck Kuyper first, explaining everything, and there was more information in that email. It had the two attachments with fillable forms uh, there. It's the one, I'm, I don't know that we need a formal motion, but the one fillable form is where, since Linda's the one that has the access to um, the password and user ID required to enter the information. It's a form indicating that the person doing this has the authorization of the board. Um, so I, I didn't see that until yesterday, where obviously the agendas and everything were pre approved. So um, we probably should add, maybe, Chris, if you want to put it as an E4 is I'll make a motion to authorize Township Administrator Linda Ashley. F4 or E4? E4. I know we're in F and correspondence, but just again, this is the end of year portion, um, that she's authorized to complete all of the documentation 
and provide the information necessary for the NOPEC Community Sponsorship Award. You're making the motion? Yep, I'm going to make that motion. I'll second it. Now you're definitely official, and in case there's any question, you've got it documented. Thank you. Lynch? We'll um, yeah, we're going to. Lynch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Abraham? Yes. Yuri? Yes. That was 12-6, right? Yes. 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 That was for the NOPEC, NOPEC Community Event Sponsorship. Okay, because they have a form in there, David, that I just received yesterday that specifically would be Linda saying she was authorized by the board, so I just want to make it official. Okay, the next item, uh, this is something I just want to bring before the board. This is the uh, Lorraine County engineer, and I suppose technically they didn't have to, uh, this is where it gets squishy, does the township even have the authority of adjusting this, then Sandstone Parkway will become a county road, but the county engineer did ask about the lighting, since they want to get the underground uh, power put in place for the lighting there. And First Energy was providing two different options. You've got the details in your packet. Uh, the one that's referred to as the Colonial Post, uh, which is going to be similar to what you see in the other subdivisions that we have in the township, versus the Cobra Lamp, which is the larger as David's termed it, the industrial look that we tend to have more at the intersections on our higher speed, higher usage in terms of traffic count roads. And reality is, is my response back since uh, Sean DeFala sent this out, and he, uh, David was included initially since he's our rep on the lighting. I said, well, since it's a county road, the township is, will defer to what the county engineer puts in place, making sure they consider the uh, aesthetics and the um, safety and security. But as far as aesthetics and consistency in the development, since the sub subdivision uh, will be using the colonial post, those seem like the most appropriate here. And then, as David's indicated in the previous meetings on the cost of the LED versus the high pressure sodium, because of the uh, current agreement with First Energy that's in place, it's, again, it's, for us, it's a lower cost if we're consuming more energy. So we're obviously going to do that. And if something ever changed in the future, obviously the fixtures don't need to change for the colonial post, but they can change those lamps inside uh, to be LED. But the county has chosen the um, colonial post style also along Sandstone Parkway. Their logic is, had this been a divided highway, so to speak, they might have used the Cobra, but since it's not, they think this will look better, give the safety and security. My understanding, the location is going to be along the multi-purpose pathway, too, which Sean DeFall indicates will um, be more appropriate. And they will do it per the township standards, so there will be a lamp post at uh, no more than 300-foot distance. And then there are also uh, the uh, John Evanson uh, representing the Sandstone developers has also indicated that he spotted a lamp post that each one of, um, oh, they're, they're not really roundabouts, but the little obstructions that are in there to keep traffic, to slow traffic down is that in the layout presented to First Energy is that there'd be a lamp at each one of those locations also. Um, so they will meet the township's lighting standard. Uh, so this is just for information. Whose lights are they going to be? Are they going to be ours or are they going to be the county's? They'll be ours just as they are now. We've got county roads and if there's a light at the intersection, the township pays for the light. If you recall, David, that was the same question that came up on Middle Ridge Road lighting, where the county engineers 
uh, because the way a scoring is used for a grant that they're applying, they're taking the uh, higher light in terms of lumens measurement, not wattage, to improve safety. So the county wanted to switch over to the LEDs, and they gave the township the option of whether it be the high pressure sodium or the LEDs, and they presented what the cost differential would be, um, which was, I think, under two bucks a piece. I believe it was like $1.70 each. Um, but they're hoping that the township would approve that, and, and the county said, we'll pay for the new fixtures that are required. But the township had to understand that since we have this agreement with First Energy, that we would be paying for the actual power on a monthly basis per light that was transitioned over to LED. So this is no different than the lights on every other county road. The township is paying for those lights that are there. So just like that, we would pay for these lights. Because I know that in the subdivision specifications for the streets, uh, we put in to have street lights so they're all new streets that would come in to the township assuming that they would be township roads on the township roads would have street lighting on them as opposed to uh, just at the intersections mm -hmm. okay we did that however those specifications are intended for township roads like I said the assumption is that the, the new roads are going to become part of the township system therefore they should conform to what we the township wants. Now, this road was built uh, according to the county specifications. It's my understanding that the county doesn't have street lights. So, theoretically, you know, are we are we moving away on our street lighting policy from township roads <coughs> or, uh, to do county roads also, or? Any public road in the township, or are we, we still going to stay with, with township roads? That's the, the point, and the, the point you bring up on Middle Ridge, all those lights that are going to be replaced are in an intersection with a township road, or a township responsible, a street that's a township responsibility. Each one of those items, each one of those lights is technically lighting an intersection with the township road. Uh, I, you know, if we're going to go, and I've got no problem going to that because at some point it's probably going to go to that way anyway. And you might as well do it now and then you don't have to do it later. But uh, if we're going to go there, I, I want that to be the policy and have have it understand if we're going to try to do every new road, whether it be a county road or a township road, okay, fine. Uh, but if we're going to stay at township, I mean, if we're going to stay at township roads, it's going to like township roads, then we need to stay at township roads. So we, I, I look at it, just whatever the policy is, but just let's define what the policy is. And if I understand what you're saying, our policy should be, we, we should light intersections and they should, we should be here regardless of whether it's a, a township road or a county road. If it's in the township, uh, and we have authority because we can do any public place, that's what it says in the revised code. Uh, so we could, we could light an intersection of two county roads as well as uh, uh, two township roads. Um, probably could light state roads too if we wanted to. According uh, to Sean at the county engineer, it's a little more difficult to do a state route because there's permits that are required for putting a light in on a, on a state right away. But uh, that's where we're going because uh, I, I think we need to, to be firm in what we're what we're saying and, and, and stick to it, you know, one way or the other. And if I, like I said, if I read you right, we're going to do any new road. Ninety-nine percent of them are going to be township. Uh, roads, but there might be a county road that gets snuck in there, uh, and we'll require or we'll like that too. Uh, but uh, I just want it to be clear that that's going to be the policy and that, that we follow that. You understand what I'm saying? I thought I did at the beginning, but you talked so long now I got confused. Well, David, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can clarify. Are these roads or 
Both township and county. You know. No, no. First off, don't put words in my mouth. You said you're reading me. I don't know what you're reading. And you're talking about That's my position and policy. Let's be clear what I said. And let's put, let's read what I had first. Here was Sean Gate, two specific questions. Are the lights along Sandstone Parkway being added to Amherst Township ESIP street light account? Simple answer is yes, because that's a lower cost method to do it. Regardless, we got to pay for them. The county's not going to pay for them. They're in our township. Every other county road that has lights on, we pay for them, correct? Yes or no, David? In the township, if there's an intersection, we pay for the we pay for the light. So yes. So stop right there. Road. The answer is yes. So that was Sean's first question. The answer is yes. Second question: Are we installing Colonial Post top lights or Cobra lights? That's a second question. Here's my response, which you received a copy of this in bold. The settlement agreement did not get into the specifics of street lights, but the township's attached resolution regarding general rules and regulations for street development in Amherst Township specifies the following for street lights lighting in the township. You know, and so the, the Colonial Post top lights are, you know, and it's basically just look at the resolution which says every 300 feet. So it, I re respond, the Colonial top, Post top lights are more aesthetically pleasing, but one might argue that the Cobra head would be better for safety and security. As Sandstone Parkway will be a county road, the Lorraine County engineer should make the decision on the type of lights along Sandstone Parkway with consideration for safety, security, and aesthetics. The township's requirements for street lights at street intersections, cul-de-sacs, and 300 foot minimum distance between the street lights should be met. But we cannot dictate what the county does on their roads. All we know is when it comes to paying for the power of the street light or the damage of the street light because the ESIP contract, the township's on the hook for that. So that's what we can do and in this case the counties agreed, okay, they think the Colonial Post is more appropriate, and they will go ahead and meet the township's request of every 300 feet and every intersection, which we specify in our requirements. But we cannot force it on them, David. It's just like what we put in for subdivision review on streets. The county engineer asked the townships, put in what you want, which we did. But all it is, is they're the engineers, they make the decision, so they will try and meet what you want in terms of the street design. But this is going to become the county's road. So I was just confused with everything you said, because when we went through those standards on roads and included street lighting, what did we have in there originally? Well, first off, was anything even documented? To my knowledge, there was no standard till I became a trustee on roads. Who argued the most for the lighting system that we included as part of our roads resolution? Do you recall? No, that I spoke up. It was you. Yeah. And when we argued about where to have them, we all agreed intersections, and we thought, well, geez, maybe we got to specify curvature, and it came down to, well, 300 feet seemed reasonable, but we got to recognize there's a cost to that that we got to pay. So that's why you confuse me here. The counties agreed, the developers agreed, they'll meet the township's request, so we don't change our policy. Our policy is for our roads, but boy, if we can get them to agree to do what we think is more safe and better for security, let's do it. But recognize we're paying for it. So I, I don't know what you were reading of me or anything else, but you're reading it wrong. As I said, I punted back to the engineer. It's your road. Here's what we like. And they've agreed to it. So I don't think this needs any more discussion. The, the you aren't going to object to this, right? 
Are you objecting to this? Do you want something done no different? No. Uh, I just wanted to be consistent. That's all, Neil. I just wanted to be consistent. Uh, well, I'd if like something to be comes up, if someone requests a light or on our road, if maybe maybe past Los Amherst Road, maybe Corey Road. Maybe, well, you just had a request on, on Broadway. But that, those are our streets. I'm talking on a road that isn't ours, it's the county's. If somebody okay. asks for a light on a county road, the re response to them should not be, it's a county road, we don't maintain it. It should be, we only do intersections. That is what I would think. We cannot... What I'm saying is we, we could conceivably, if there was a problem and we deemed it to be a, a necessity for a street light, we could install a street light on uh, one of those roads, pass off Amherst or uh, I'm just saying, Corey okay. or what's another All right, road? well, let's not go with hypotheticals. We've got a lot to cover. I brought this yes, forward so everybody's aware of it. It's been discussed. There's nothing hidden here. I don't no. want any complaints later, and I really didn't expect this to become controversial at all. Our policy stands the way it is for township roads. The county engineer gave us the opportunity to choose the type of light and the number of lights, location of lights. We took advantage of that opportunity. It sounds like you agree with it, so I'm done talking about it. When you say township roads, any road within the township. This county road, or the, new road. It's in the township. Okay. You say township roads. But what you're saying when you say township roads, you're applying it to both the township responsible roads and the county responsible roads. Our policy is for our township roads. But if we can apply it in other areas, and the owner of that street's willing, I will accept that, David, but recognize there is a cost to it. And we pay the cost, our taxpayers, our residents, our businesses. All right? Is there anything else you're reading that I can't see? No, 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 no that's it. That is how you interpret this. And, uh, well, I just needed somebody else to tell me how I think. I was trying to understand you. Or maybe it wasn't the right verbiage. Okay. You know, it's how I read how, how I read how I understand you. How you think. How I understand you. That's important. Well, here's another one. I'm gonna move on, Chris. It's um I don't think we need any resolution on that. Um I thought I was just providing information. I thought people would be happy about it. The next one is on fire hydrants. Did you have a question, Joan, on lighting? Excuse me, I do. Are you going to do audience concerns today? Or are you going to do this whole thing? I, hang, George, I just wanted to ask that. Joan, can you use the microphone because it will pick up for the video? Okay. I'm Joan Whitman. I live in Amherst Township on Overland Road. I just want to know if we're going to do audience concerns tonight. Um, you know what? I, sh I didn't have that in there, but yes. Uh, and the chair is going to take the prerogative of having audience concerns now, so because okay. Joan must have something, I don't want her to get stuck here all night. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> all right, I live on Oberlin Road, 5961 Oberlin Road, Amherst Township. Lived there for over 40 years. Um, I have a driveway that's like a quarter of a mile long if you go to my house. If you go to my back property, the driveway is much longer. A problem has come up with Hampshire Court and my driveway on a GPS system. It's sending everybody to my house. Oh. I get deliveries for Amazon that have to go to Hampshire Court. I get deliveries for, they wanted to deliver me washer and dryers, refrigerator, a uh, uh, living room set, a dining room set. Um, and the other day, this is what concerned me. This is why I come to see you guys about this. The sheriff deputy came to my house and um, he said, do you have a silent alarm going off? And I do have an alarm system in my house. So I said, no, I don't have my alarm system on. 
He says, well, we have a report that there's a silent alarm going off in the basement. Are you sure your basement alarm isn't going off? I said, no, it's not turned on. I've been here all day. So he called dispatch, and then he asked me my name, and then he asked me my address. And I said to him, you want to be over in the new housing allotment. You don't want to be here. Oh, so off he went. <coughs> my concern is if an ambulance is called to go to Hampshire Court and they come to my house, or if the fire department is called to go to Hampshire Court and they come to my house, something bad is going to happen over this. And I don't know where to go to get that resolved. I, you know, so I'm here to present this problem to you guys and hope we can get it straightened out. Well, there's... <laughs> Look, I wonder what happens. Well, I'm not going to take the time to do it now. I was going to type in an address for Hampshire Court and see what the mapping system... 743 is a good address for Hampshire Court. I get a lot of their stuff. Okay. What's your address again? Anything good? Pardon? What's your address again? 5961 Oberlin Road. And my driveway and Hampshire Court, you know, they both run back. DoorDash delivers to me all the time. You should have a whole new house set of everything, right? <laughs> I'm going to start keeping the food. You know. If I needed a washer and dryer, I'd keep the washer and dryer. Joan, I don't you, know. You don't geocode have you out tried? I know Google's real hard to get a hold of. I don't know if you've tried to contact them. I know we have an issue with the park, too. It, Google shows the house right next to the park entrance as the park and before COVID I was trying to get that fixed and had a whole bunch of issues with them but I was trying to contact them uh, to get that changed through Google. Well, I don't know. I didn't know where to go or you know how to get that yeah. corrected and if the Sheriff's Department doesn't know about it then you know. I would think it's a Google problem. What came up on yours? Yeah. There's Hampshire. Google Maps has 743 going to the right place. Was it Chris just pulled something up too yeah. here for the third? Your address comes right up. Right. Your house. Right. So when we get it, this is how we get ours. The sheriff should geocode the same way. And they ended up at my house. Did you try like 743 Hampshire? 743 Hampshire? Yeah, just to see. And then, I mean, there's a 703, there's a 718, there's, you know, 704. You're getting everybody's stuff. I do. Fortunately, it's going to an honest person that's getting it back. For a while, I would deliver to, it over there. Remember when they'd send out the children's books, you know, and try and get you sucked, and you were told you could keep those, and they were not under no responsibility to return them. This is a little bit different. Yeah. On the fire, the 743 Hampshire came up right, too. And mine came up. I wonder if it was just a, has you gotten any recent ones, Joan? Oh, yes, the sheriff was after he was just there the other day. All right, can you do me a favor and put it in an email in writing? Um, what I want to do is, is send it to Deputy Fuller and probably to 911 dispatch specifically so that we can get a written response from them. Okay, but it'll help if you put everything down so we know it's first person. Send the email to me and I'll forward that on. Okay. Okay. And All right. They so can look at it and get it, get it set between um, dispatch, and I'll also include um, Dave Freeman, who's with the um, Lorraine County Emergency Management Homeland Security, and let them try and figure it out for us. Okay. You're not the first person that's had this problem, so. Well, like I said, you know, if an ambulance is sitting at my house and somebody's having a heart attack. Yeah, well, it should get done right because, I mean, the new 911 system is supposed to even be three-dimensional now so we can get into multi-story buildings and know where people are. Right. You know, and here we can't even get to the right porch. <laughs> well, fortunately, you didn't call one of those television, you know, guys that like to come out with the oh, microphones. Yeah. That, <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, but if you put that together, you know, Deputy Fuller, Lorraine County Emergency Management, 911, and let's see what they can tell us. Okay. Okay. 
Thanks, Joan. Uh, I should have asked you right from the get-go that you probably weren't here just to hear all this stuff. No, I wasn't. That's why I thought I'd interrupt you. All right. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go back to the regular meeting then. The final correspondence, this is from Joe Waldecker of rural Lorraine County Water. And um, with the new sandstone development uh, coming in to service that, uh, if you look in your packet, um, and you can probably start with what is this, this map here to show the uh, direction um, you can see that there's a proposed additional 12-inch water main uh, running along State Route 58 on the east side. So heading down from like near the intersection of State Route 113 and going north on the east side of 58 up to where, and you can see it's kind of ghosted in there, where the business park road is going to come out to 58. And uh, at this time, there is a hydrant that is required for the development that will be paid by the development. Uh, but what uh, Joe's put together here is the, is the township would have to decide now if we want this, and obviously the township paying for it, is they would put in two additional hydrants there along 58, which, um, so it's kind of pre-planning, do it while they're digging, and they can get the risers all set. Um, the two alternatives that he presented, because if you look at this quote, which came from Buckeye State Pipe and Supply, the only difference is the one hydrant includes a stored fitting, uh, which Amherst Fire prefers, so does South Amherst. The other one does not. Uh, total cost, if you look, there's a spreadsheet that I put together and Joe verified because it was a little confusing on the quote. But if we had uh, two hydrants with the stored fittings, we're talking $16,621 uh, to service this area. But they're expecting, in Joe's response, that the township pay for that. It's probably a worthwhile cost. I'm going to talk with the county since they've actually tipped this whole area for the improvement. And the way the TIP was written generally, if that can be accomplished, include that. So assuming there's no objection from the schools for this, um, because I'm not aware of any other grant funds out there to do it, but perhaps uh, Marin County Community Development can decide that. But Joe needs an answer now. So unless there's any objection, um, and and. Uh, David, you weren't on the original email. Denny's our rep on rural water, so he's on here. Um, I assume that Joe Waldecker included me as the chair on the board. Then he sent it to uh, the fire chiefs that service that area. Um, and I talked with Chris, and you know he gave me the response I expected. Obviously, they want the storage fittings on everything. If you recall back when the fire department requested this to keep the costs manageable, is former Chief Northheim pick strategic locations to start out with the hope that eventually all hydrants um, would include these fittings or any replacements would include these fittings. So is there any objection to having those two hydrants added even though we don't know yet if there's additional funds available? Worst case is it would cost the township $16,621.40. On an estimate. Joe says it's an estimate. Should be higher, too, because this estimate was based on 16-inch uh, diameter versus 12-inch. So obviously, as you decrease the size, um, the cost will actually be a little bit lower. Are these uh, uh, soft suction hydrants? Are they what? Are these soft suction hydrants? Soft suction or, yeah, like... Or are these regular hydrants? Yeah, they're regular hydrants. Okay. The location he has on that map is not where they're, they may not end up there. I think we're waiting until we're going to, I think we're going to go out there and meet with him and see exactly where to put them so there's not going to be a spacing in between. Since those buildings are already existing, we're going to put them in locations where they're going to be beneficial for us because they're, they're not going to put any more buildings in between where they're going to put those two hydrants. So we might move one a little bit closer to a driveway or one a little bit closer to the middle so we can get to service two properties with one. So 
and I prefer Chris, the fire department, do this. This actually meets uh, Chief Wilhelm one of this done ages ago, but it was just, hey, we're going to wait till there's development to pay for it, and that's where, if you recall, there was a lot of discussions um, when the Allied craft workers and bricklayers put up their building, and ultimately it became a private hydrant that they paid for, and Chief Wilhelm's concern was he didn't want to be dragging hoses across 58 to service this side of the road, so by getting this in now, you know, we'll have those hydrants available. I'm just not sure in discussions with the county if we can get this covered with that and also that it doesn't in any way uh, disagree with what the uh, Amherst Exempted Village Schools agreed to and the TIF, you know, which is one option. I mean, there's other options potentially here that the county can come up with, but I hope the county sees the benefit in this. Uh, obviously, ARPA funds would have been directly for water service, uh, but I don't know what they've got even left there, if anything. Okay. And ours, it's not, David, we have the fire funds now, but we're, as we're aware, uh, when we purchased the new vehicle, which you know is still not quite three years out now, but you know that's going to deplete a good portion of what's been built up in the fire fund and we know that you know we've reached that uh, inflection point where now money going out is more than money coming in we've got plenty of carry over to handle that but eventually that's going to have to be addressed by the voters you know you don't want to let it get to the point where it's critical and you can't pay your bills and I remember prior to becoming a trustee that was one of the townships concern they didn't have enough money to pay for the fire service at the time. So is there any objection if I tell Joe yes and we want the option with the storage fittings? No, no. no. The, the only uh, question I would have is how close is this going to get to the bricklayers? And I remember how there was a difficulty with that hydrant and I was wondering if that would help out the situation with that line coming, coming from the north going south. Uh, how close it would get to the, the bricklayers. The part that they're replacing is a three inch line that runs on the east side of the street. So at six inch, down to three inch, back up to six inch. They're going to eliminate all that and make that 12 inch. So once you get south of, I think it's the uh, might be ANC tire, that is already eight and 10 inch down that, toward that end of Route 113. But it, it crosses the road in a few different spots. The one at the bricklayers, is on the same line that their sprinkler line is hooked to. And that's off of, that's got a pretty good flow on that one, but this is also going to tie into that. So it's going to be beneficial for water line, water lines going up and down 113 as well. So it's not just to cover that little area, it's to improve everything. I see now. I think it should be bigger. Okay, I understand now. It makes a little more sense. <clears throat> but I get no have problem to with that. Later, later, because of the growth is going to be. You won't believe the growth is going to be. And it's, a, it's going to be a 12-inch line, and that feeds off of a 24-inch main that goes down that railroad bed. So it's. <coughs> I, mean, I think they're they're upsizing it. And there is water on the other side of the street, an eight inch line on the west side of the road as well. But How big is that line? Eight inch <coughs> on the west side. But like I say, they're trying to fix this, like where it's all botched up and it's three inch, six inch. They're trying to get rid of all that and then they're going to push it all the way down to ANC Tire where there's, a, I think, an eight or a ten inch line now. And they're going to improve the flow down that side, on the east side of the street, all the way down to 113. That's going to help okay. all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll send a response to Joe on that one then. Do we need to form that in the form of a motion? Um, well, it'd probably be nice to have it documented, Denny, if yeah. you want to do that. I just um, didn't prepare anything here, but um, and if you just want something that the township supports, 
uh, the addition of two hydrants with storage fittings uh, as specified in the uh, Buckeye State Pipe and Supply quote provided by Rural Lorraine County Water. We've got of two hydrants with storage fittings. As specified in the Buckeye State Pipe and Supply Company quotation. Applied by Rural Lorraine County Water. Okay. And the Amherst Township trustee will, board of trustees will investigate funding alternatives. Second. I'll second that motion. I'm still ready. At 12 6. No. Um, No, that no package. Okay, so Lynch made the motion. Twelve seven twenty three. Lynch. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Eric. Yes. That's it as far as what I had for correspondence. So that'll be the end of our 2023 end of year. We'll now go into the 2024 organizational meeting. So that being said, the uh, chair is open for nominations. I make a motion to appoint Neil as chair. Second. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Then I'll make a motion to appoint David Urig as the vice chair for 2024 until a successor is appointed. I'll second that motion. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Urig? Yes. Okay, and as far as assignments, um, I only made one change here, and Denny, that affects you, and it was just the roads and ditches. I'd switched over to me, and, and pretty much because, you know, any of the public works grant funds we apply for, they always require that, re require that the chair sign the documentation, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been working directly with the county engineer, Lyndon Kevin, here as far as more for trying to acquire additional funds for our drainage courses, even though it says ditches, which includes our roadside ditches. Um, so that's the only change I made. I moved that from you to me. Everything else stays the same. Um, okay. Okay, so you guys can see those assignments. Georgiana will get that updated on the website and it'll show up in the next newsletter. And so then um, the next item is a resolution for the Ohio Public Works signatory to designate the chairman as a signer of the Ohio Public Works for 2024 with David Urig and Dennis Abraham as the alternates. Second. Lynch? Yes. Urig? Yes. Abraham? Yes. We need a motion for executive session. Um, I don't think we will, David. We usually have that on here for the discussion as far as promotions or changes, but we did that at the last meeting, and I'll cover that in a minute. I just, uh, Chris, was that 1210 for the public works? Yes, it was. Okay, thank you. Um, but in any case, I, I just left it on here, but we had discussed at an executive session uh, at our last meeting as far as any adjustments to the wage classes, and there was only uh, one promotion that was included in that, uh, that being, uh, well, we'll get to that. That'll be coming. So I don't see a need unless the trustees believe there, 
there is a need. Um, I see no need. I mean, nothing right now unless we need to go into anything later, so. Okay, and I see I got your packets I have out of order here. So the next would be the wage rate classes. So you're going to have to dig through uh, your packet and get the spreadsheet that shows the adjustments to the wage class rates. Uh, for 2024, the adjustment was put at 3.1%, uh, which is what the current consumer price index for all urban wage earners is from November of 2022, or from um, December 1st, if you will, through November uh, 30th of 2023. And the, there's all sorts of information here, which we had discussed at the previous meeting, other than the update is, is we did not have the most current Bureau of Labor Statistics um, CPI for November. That was released, I believe it was on December 16th. And so that is for the 12 months was 3.1%, which is what the increase in wage rates is. Um, uh, we already knew for Social Security, CPIW was at 3.2%. So the wage increase we're putting matches the for all wage earners, but not, it's a little just a hair lower than what the um, Social Security is. The other piece we didn't have that we have now is health care rates. And you can see health care rates went up 7.9%. Uh, this is a health care rate with the Lorain County system. Uh, that had just come out, and for a uh, single on a monthly basis, total cost is $1,063.89 for a single, and for a family is $2,668.37. That's what the total cost is. Uh, the county was looking at some changes of making their health care plan uh, compliant with the Affordable Care Act. But after a lot of back and forth with their employees and the various unions that they deal with, uh, they decided to keep their legacy plan. Uh, the only difference what that would have meant to our employees and any elected official that's on that health care plan would have been having um, preventative services basically paid for versus now that you'll pay a portion. Happening. Pardon? That is what's happening. They came out of grandfathered status. No, the last I got was that they're staying in grandfathered status. I so. That's the email that you sent me and Tanya sent me. And that's where I printed this Preventative from. services will be covered at 100%. Yeah, let me get the last one. Hoping I could scroll down, but so many emails come in. I'm probably going to have to do a search on this. Bear with me, Chris. I have one on my computer. Do you want me to print it real quick? Um, yeah, you'd have to. It was the letter from the chair of the Board of Commissioners. Yeah, I have Kevin forwarded it to me. Uh, yeah, week. if you can print that yeah. out from David Moore, I'm going to have to do a search, Linda. There are just way too many emails came in. from the board president on December 20 on uh, Tuesday December 12th at the Lorraine County Commissioners meeting Commissioner Moore and Commissioner Verdell passed a resolution for the 2024 benefit plan leaving the grandfather status plan of the 90s leaving for a more it. contemporary and employee friendly benefit plan the path started in 2021 and I regret that politics got involved and delayed this opportunity 
for all plan participants to benefit. As you can see with this attached document, that last year in 2023, our employees paid over $1 million out of pocket from our new, that our new plan would have covered. On behalf of our team who worked so hard and a majority of this board, we appreciate your patience and understanding as we will continue to make Lorraine County a great place to work and live. Dave Moore. What's the date on that? There is no date. It just says on Tuesday, December 12th. But that's in the email that I sent out on, or that Tanya sent, sorry. Okay, so on December 12th. 12, 14, and then I believe I forwarded that. Yeah, I got it from you and I got it directly from Tanya. It says they passed a resolution for the 2024 benefit plan leaving grandfather. the grandfather status plan of the 90s for more contemporary and employee-friendly benefit plan. So the path started in 2021 and I regret that politics got involved and delayed this opportunity for a plan or for all plan participants to benefit. So we did not, they're staying with the grandfather plan. No, they are not. They're leaving the grandfather plan. Well, is there, read what you got again because mine is dated, says on December 12th. Yeah, I just read that out loud. This is the one you're reading, Chris? From Dave Moore, that's what I just read. Yeah, it says, on We're Tuesday, December 12th, at the Lorraine County Commissioner's meeting, Commissioner Moore and Commissioner Riddell passed a resolution for, it says, a plan. Leaving the grandfather status plan. It's yeah. poorly written, but they're not going away from it. They're leaving the plan of the 90s. Here is the resolution. So we are going to have the preventative and yep. be affordable. Yeah, yes. that's so poorly written. Well, leaving. Right. Leaving am I leaving walking away or am I leaving it? Alone. Yes. You're saying bye-bye. Yes, there is it. Well, then maybe you will get it. And if you do. Here's December 12th. This is the resolution where it says health care reform benefits, reform preventative benefits covered at 100%, currently covered at 80%. Health care reform preventative benefits for women covered at 100%. Family planning exams changing That's to 21 dated and when? under. Huh? What, what you're reading now is dated when? December 12th. This was the attachment that was there? Yes. Okay. Well, Kevin, you and Russ are going to have to look at that because that's going to change. You know, obviously you're going to want to get an annual physical and whatnot that now you won't have to pay out of pocket for. Is it saying it's covered 100%, right? Preventative services are covered. It says, where is it? Preventative tests, so physical exams change to 21 and are under and under cover at 100%. Immunizations covered at 100%. So that would be the good news. If Preventative it's tests as follows will change from 80 to 100. Endoscopic services, lab, mammogram, medical test, pap test, x-rays. Well child care covered up to age 21 at 100%. All cardiac rehab to the add cardiac rehab to the plan. Add occupational therapy to the plan. Change emergency copay from Okay, 20 well, what we're going to have to do, Chris, instead of going through it now, because Russ isn't here anyway, is we're going to have to educate him here, and it may require Kevin actually talking with Tanya B. Kraft directly and reading the document that explains the details, because that'll just change yeah, the way. Yeah, I think you've got, I sent it, that the attachment, it's a uh, Lorraine County 2024 benefit guide. Okay, but you understand it's going to change the way you use your health care because obviously if you're getting an annual physical covered, it's not going to be any cost. You'll be more incentivized. Go get it done. Get it scheduled. Get it done. Okay. 
Okay. Well, you should have... See? See? Had you known this, you would have waited, you know, because now you got to pay 20%. Right. Well, that was on Friday, and I got this on Monday. Yeah. What kind of... Course. Of well, that's... <laughs> You'll get another one next year. Next year's will be covered. Right. Um, you might at least want to pass that on to Russ just on preventive services that there'll be no to lower cost, but he's going to have to investigate uh, the details on that. Okay, but um, you guys, you know what there's age appropriate type preventive services you should be getting, and many times people put them off because of the cost. You know, and some of them aren't real fun to do anyway, but it's important to get them done, so now you're incentivized to do it, okay? But this would be a perfect example for an English teacher to read, you know. It was probably in that attachment I told you that they mentioned that we didn't get. Interpretation. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, but right now, with the 3.1%, you guys are all in agreement with that. You see the adjustments in the wage classes there. Uh, the only thing that's uh, in terms of wages that is outside our control, which you've also got included here, is the uh, federal uh, minimum wage is still the same. Hasn't changed since I think it was uh, 2007. So, and I don't know anybody that will be paying the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, but the state of Ohio went up from $10.10 an hour to $10.45 beginning in 2024. And that's usually where if we have an entry level, temporary, seasonal type person would be who would be at that rate. And so with that, you can see all the employees that pretty much stay in their same uh, wage class. Uh, the only ones that, there's two that weren't in a specific wage class, um, the part-time road superintendent. So Daryl's wage now, Kevin, will be twenty-one fifteen an hour. Okay. Go one by one. <coughs> Pardon? So you want to go one by one to motion? Yeah, we will. I just want to give an overall here, Chris, first. So I'll make... No, that came in. Was that the Dave Moore one? It yeah. was with the attachment. That was sent out with all the material on... Tell me when you're ready, Chris. I'm ready. All right, then I'm going to make a motion that the hourly rate for our employees will be uh, the following classes, and it references see the attached spreadsheet for wage and health care trend analysis. So wage class A is 36.77, A1 34.36, A2 28.11, B 26.52, B1 23.61, C 23.37, D 18.56, E 15.89, and F will be the higher of the federal or Ohio minimum wage, which is essentially going to be the Ohio minimum wage at 10.45. So that'll be my motion. I'll second that. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? Yes. That's 1211, Yes, Chris? it is. Let me just check with you. Ready, David? Really? Wage rates on it. 
in the spreadsheet. Okay, well, David's looking for that, Chris. I'm going to make a motion to appoint Kevin Smarsh as is. road superintendent to be compensated at wage class A. I'll second that. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? Yes. That was 12-12. Oh, wait a minute. That was 12-13. 12-11 was? 12-11 was the wage rate classes. Oh, you're right, you're right. Twelve. I make a motion to appoint Russ Rittenauer to road crew to be compensated at wage class A2. Second. Lynch? Yes. Urig? Yes. Abraham? Yes. And I'll make a motion of a, to appoint to the road crew Daryl Saladin to be compensated at wage class 21.15 per hour. Second. Lynch? Yes. Yurig? Yes. Abraham? Yes. That's 1214, right? Yes, sir. And a motion to appoint Chris Nyhart as the fire prevention officer to be compensated, uh, reappointed, and succeeded as indicated in the agreement with the City of Amherst uh, Township Resolution uh, 10619, which for 2024 will be at 3177 per hour and $25 per call truck fee. Second. Lynch? Yes. Gary? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Okay, and the next one I'm abstaining from. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint George Ann Lynch as Township <coughs> Administrative Assistant and Media Technology Operator to become compensated at a wage class B1 up to 20 hours per week. I'll second that. Gary? Uh, hold on. Jeez. Yes. Abraham? Yes. And Lynch, I'm staying. That's 1216? Yes. I'll make a motion to appoint Sam D'Ambrosio as Amherst Township Zoning Inspector, compensated at wage class B, up to 20 hours per week. Second that. Eric? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. I'll make a motion to appoint Remy Cerrone to the Zoning Commission for a five-year term beginning on January 1st, 2024. And there is an addendum resolution, Chris, spelling out all the details. That's 1218, right? Yes. Correct. We have a second? Second. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? I would just say that Remy's a great plumber. I'd recommend him to anybody, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote no on this resolution. Okay, then the next one is to appoint Randy Herring to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, for a five-year term beginning on January 1st, 2024, and there's also a detailed resolution for that also, Chris. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? Yes. 
And the next one is appoint Linda Ashley as the Amherst Township Administrator and Director of Senior Services, be compensated at wage class A2, not to exceed 29 hours per week, and an additional 16 hours of paid personal time off above what the personnel policy allowance to be used in 2024. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Yuri? I don't know. Yes. It only takes two days. I just want to see if you're paying, it to, paying attention, Linda. Oh, I was paying attention. Oh. Okay, and that's 1220, Chris? Yes, it is. Okay, now the next one, there is an addendum in here. Uh, this is the one promotion uh, that the trustees discussed at a previous executive session. Uh, this is for Morgan Orozco, uh, and I'm just going to read the short version. Is to appoint Morgan Orozco as a part-time seasonal administrative assistant to and media assistant of Amherst Township be compensated wage class D on an as-required basis to assist the township administrator and operate technology um, during meetings and public hearings and storing electronic records. That will be my motion. Is that the separate one? Yeah, this one has an addendum, so it says see addendum Second. here. And just, uh, if I can just add to that, um, the details in the prepared resolution uh, talk about up to 1,100 hours. Um, so the promotion is from $14 an hour to wage class D up to 1,100 hours per year. That isn't the expectation that those hours be serviced every week. It's going to be on as needed as directed by uh, Linda Ashley. What we're hoping is that uh, we're gonna offset some of this cost increase by Morgan will be taking over hours that George Ann spends in preparing the video after the meeting, uploading the video. Um, she's also going to be helping more with the, which she already is, but with the uh, zoning inspector and pre-checking applications that come in. Uh, and I'm hoping that Linda will start bringing her along more on uh, applying for different grants and it's not just the grants that we currently are aware of, uh, but also researching some of the grants that, frankly, we just don't have the time to even put in the application. You know, you see some of these grants come through that we actually are eligible for, but when you look at the amount of effort that's required to even put in an application that, you know, it's, there's no guarantee you get funded. And as Linda, you've seen on some of them, it's, we do a lot of work and then right. don't get funded. And it's, it can get frustrating. So uh, if we give Morgan these additional hours and she takes on this additional responsibility, that should give us a better chance of hopefully getting that funding. But some of it is even just the knowledge that these opportunities are there and to keep pushing it and also to get a better coordination with uh, county community development, which keeps saying they'll help us. I know they're struggling with staff, but you know, we're still going to lean on them also so Morgan can start developing those relationships directly at the county level. Can we call roll call on this? No, nope, not yet, it. so she's going to. Lynch? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. And that's 1221, Chris? Correct. Okay, the uh, deferred comp is continue the agreement with the Ohio Public Employees Deferred Comp, establishing a deferred compensation benefit program for the Amherst Township employees. Um, maximum monthly employer match was increased from $100 to $150 a month in the policy in 2023. That was the first increase since 2007. And we're not recommending any change in that since we you know, kind of made an adjustment based on uh, inflation back in 2023. But this is just a motion to continue that program. So I'll make that motion. Second. I think David got that first, Denny. Lynch? 
Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Okay, the next one, I'm not going to read through all the detail, but this is, um, <clears throat> what this is going to do is providing health insurance as an option for those elected officials that choose hospitalization, life, dental, prescription, drug, and vision insurance coverage. Um, what I'm not going to read is all the detail that talks about what the uh, contribution on a per pay basis is. That was shown in that uh, spreadsheet and let me get that out because I'm sure people are interested in that. This is what will come out of their paycheck. David, I feel like you now. Okay, the paper. Yeah, I'm looking for the spreadsheet. Okay, on the, for the family plan, it will be $151.37 uh, for the employee's contribution. Single plan will be $75.68. It's on the spreadsheet, Chris, on the first row. Yeah. No, that's what the total cost is from the county, but then what gets deducted out of their paycheck on the spreadsheet here, on the first row, if you read it across, This is what's always been used. This is what Howard used. Right now you're deducting 145.67 for a family plan that will go up to the 151.37. Okay. <coughs> But I'll go ahead and make that motion. I'll second it. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? Yes. And then the next one is just the equivalent thing, but it's for full time employees. I'll make that motion. Second. Lynch? Eric. Yes. Eric? Yes. Abraham. Yes. And then secretarial services for the zoning board will be paid at a wage class B1. I'll make that motion. Second. That's 1225. Yes, sir. Lynch. Yes. Urig. Yes. Abraham. Yes. 1226. I'll make that. Continue, continue the relationship with the Ohio Township Risk Management Authority Insurance Pool. I will make that. I'll second it. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Okay, the, the next one, and for Jan, I don't, you didn't have anything for zoning changes, did you? Zoning resolution book, no. just a policy manual. No. Okay. Later next year. So there's none of those changes are there yet, but as we've discussed at other meetings, things that are they're in um, process. Right. And what's what's being discussed was like um, some of the prohibited uses if we need to shore those up, such as you know where the things come up with monofills or sludge pits or whatever that you've been seeing occur in some of the other townships. Uh, ours are silent on that. It came up with some confusion on the definitions of the differentiation between ponds and uh, stormwater retention basins where we had to work that out with the prosecutor. Well, that will clean up that particular language. You know, and just some other, where there's mistakes that we found as you're using your book, you find typos or even outright errors and references, so those will be cleaned up, but that will be coming up. But there are going to be updates to the policy manual, so I'm just going to turn this over to Georgianne, and you've got a separate packet here for the policy manual review. Uh, the first page is kind of what we review every year, and that would be the 2024 organizational meeting, item GG. And I don't, yep, that matches. Uh, Verify that the meeting times stay the second and fourth Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, 
nothing to go over for the uh, yes the personnel policy so we're going to go back and forth a little bit so the personnel policy does have some updates the second page in your packet has the table of contents page and everything in red is what's getting updated in the personal policy, there's some changes to 3.07, drug-free workplace. And there I have the copies of that policy for you in your packet. And then 3.08 was added, controlled substance and alcohol policy for commercial motor vehicle drivers. And then that made the last two uh, chapters in there, 3.9 and 3.10. And Chris, that's where I will give you copies later on with the updated numbers. Uh, I would ask, too, on this policy for 3.08, uh, we were, I was running late, and all I did was copy what Linda had provided me into the policy. So what I provided to you may have some tweaks to it. Um, nothing that will change the content. It would be predominantly formatting. So the, the yeah. differential here for the trustees to understand is the township will maintain a drug-free work, workplace policy for all of our employees, part-time, temporary, full-time. Okay. That's but 3 uh, yeah. Linda was working on the upgrade for those that have a commercial motor vehicle driver's license. And so that's what Georgiana just took what Linda's put together to make sure we're compliant there. And she kind of dropped it into the policy. She was hoping to be able to get it all formatted prior to this meeting. But, you know, there's with so much going on at the end of the year that wasn't done. So... She'd like us to prove this with the content that's there, just recognize she may be adjusting this formatting so that the flow through our policy manual and the numbering and sections and whatnot is pretty much consistent. Correct. Thank you. Well said. And that also, um, we'll get to it later on, but that also generated several new forms that will be in appendix B when we get there which hopefully we never have to use some of those forms they're usually investigative and after an incident that's occurred um, so the ideal thing is that you never get into that situation but you have to plan for it in case it does because the last thing we want to be doing is, is running around in circles to try and figure out how to address this and calling our risk managers and calling the attorneys and you know this way you're documenting it up front giving some direction as to what to do if an incident does occur. Um, then, the, then back to our, our list, uh, we went from personnel to Chapter 4 is training. Just a reminder that new zoning board members are available to come in for training. Uh, the facility use, I just wanted to verify, too, that... Um, Everything stays the same where reservations go to Linda Ashley and the hall rentals also go to her. And I guess my question here, too, is we came up with um, park rules and regulations that are on the website, and I, those are not part of the policy manual, and I didn't know that they needed to be, but I just wanted to verify that they don't need to be part of this policy manual. I don't think so, Georgianne. I can't imagine. The policy manual, the person that asks for it the most and looks at it is our risk managers when they come in and do an assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, the park rules that were set up were predominantly done uh, to make it more convenient for the residents that reserve the pavilions and also for our road crew to try and address the situation and cost so that you didn't have, if, if it's scheduled both, uh, Saturday and Sunday, you know, Kevin gets all the waste barrels and everything cleaned out, makes sure porta potties are good, and, you know, tables are clean. But we can do that on Friday and it's not an issue, and that covers the people that have reserved for Saturday. The problem is 
people that use it Saturday, if it's a large group, all that stuff gets filled up again. If Kevin or Russ or someone has to come out, that's all OT. You know, plus it, it doesn't give them a chance of a break away. So it was how do we address that? Uh, so go ahead, Linda. One thought that we had was maybe not making reservations available on Sunday. Sunday would be first come, first serve in holidays. Fridays we could set up for Saturday. That way Kevin, Russ, whoever does not have to come in on Saturday or Sunday morning, which is what they're really doing, because Saturday could go till dusk, and then they would have to come in on Sunday. So if we did reservations Monday through Saturday, and Sundays are first come, first serve. Just an idea. I'll leave that up to my fellow board members. I just know that we, we just want to prevent any of those tensions from residents that are all rushing down to use the pavilion also, that we don't have a situation that maybe it's not Kevin being called out, but it's a sheriff being called out. So in, in that aspect, then we're charging $50 for the park uh, pavilion reservation. If they have to come in on a Sunday, that just ups our price because it's time. Right, to have to exactly. How many reservations are on Sunday, though? We have, I believe we had seven. Let me see. We, I wrote it down here somewhere. We had like, <coughs> ask Morgan. Morgan, no, she, thank you. Nine? Seven. Seven. Seven, seven, seven on hours. Sunday. And how many other boys on Sundays? <coughs> Morgan? <laughs> she got, here, she's got the numbers. Okay. okay. Here, I have it. 12 on Saturdays, 7 on Sunday, and 1 on the holiday. Oh, about half of one on Sunday. <clears throat> and that's just going to increase our cost um, for <clears throat> Kevin or, and or Russ to come out. If they're coming out with use of the backhoe and everything else, it's costing us, uh, like for Kevin, to be $158 for him to come out and do it including the backhoe, because we have a backhoe cost of $73. If they come out Monday through Saturday, it's 134 for Kevin, 122 for Russ, and 109 for Daryl. So now I know um, Morgan looked it up, and Lorraine County Metro Parks are now charging $90 a day for their pavilions. For the entire day. Reserve on Sundays. They do not? Correct. And see, and that, now that's the thing if we don't worry about it on, on Sunday, that means you don't have to be coming out Saturday, which isn't something that excites you. You know, you get enough weekends you're called out that are beyond your control. You know, this is one we know about. We could just avoid it. But again, I'm going to defer <coughs> to David and Denny Question. on that. Oh. Have no comment. I don't know. My feeling is Sunday's a pretty popular day. If we say there's not going to be reservations on Sunday. It doesn't mean they can't use it. It's just that we're not going to take reservations. And we still got the two, two pavilions down there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it just people would be taking a chance, David, if they... Something. First come, Especially first serve on Sunday. We don't. Yeah, they may get down there and someone's already there. They got nothing official from the township to say they can use it. And so you know how it is. It's, they have to make the decision among themselves. And I can tell you just that though maybe it was different because they were testosterone filled men just playing in softball leagues on who had the field for practice. Everybody standing there with their bats. and. It was always nice when you could pull out your official ticket, usually signed by a safety service director or someone else, saying, sorry, boys, we rented the field, we reserved the field, you guys got to take a hike, and if you don't, we'll call the sheriff or police, depending upon which community we were in. That's my personal experience. What would you prefer to do, Kevin? I don't care at this point. He already comes out on Saturday to lock up the yard waste. 
I think we'll leave the de we'll leave the decision up to the township administrator working with the road superintendent, and then they can react based on whatever decision they make and what it, what we experience from there. How's that sound? Sure. It's kind of what we do this this time, anyways, because I asked Kevin if he's busy. If he's busy, I don't take reservations for a certain Sunday. If he's going to be out of town or something. Yeah. Kind of how we do it anyways they've never been turned down which means you've always agreed to be able to come in then correct okay we'll leave it up to you all right okay. georgianne move next on next is the records and i did uh, speak with linda earlier today and she's comfortable with the uh, color copies at 17 cents and black and white at 10 for 10 cents and she verified that their posters are hanging in the township uh, solid waste uh, verify that fall drop-off hours remain from dawn to dusk October 15th to December 1st and then that there will be two dumpster day events this year April and October uh, mailbox is the next one uh, that will remain at $75 reimbursement rate for mailboxes that uh, qualify for being replaced by the township. Uh, cemetery, on the $750 maximum cost for indigents will remain the same. And now we're to Appendix A, <coughs> which is farther down in the packet. And we just, we changed the um, meeting compensation for the zoning boards to $44 in Appendix A to match uh, the 3.1% uh, increase. Competitive threat bidding threshold for 2024 went from 16000 to 17000 Those are the changes for A. Uh, B is a big one this year. Uh, some slight changes to the distribution record that I had wanted to make, uh, but it was too much work before. But now that we're changing B, uh, the changes are in red. For the reasonable cause documentation of violation, we added a little disclaimer in there that that's one that. This form is not for commercial motor vehicles um, because then the next ones are for the commercial motor vehicles and these were all provided, but created and provided by Linda Ashley. So there's an acknowledgement form and again, Chris, these all get these to you because this will be part of the new employee process. That Which you one are you in? Appendix B-6. And these are all forms that are required from the Federal Motor Code. I know, safety. I don't, I... It's in there. It's in the, where the little paper clip... Under the distribution record. Is all, the little paper clip contains all the changes to... You look in the appendix lower left-hand corner, Chris, you'll see where it says Appendix B-6. Then there's one for uh, employee consent for full queries, and employee consent for limited queries. Yeah. Again, all, all requirements for CDLs. Then this is where the, uh, the checklist the reasonable suspicion checklist is for commercial motor vehicles <laughs> that is different than the reasonable cause documentation of violation that could be for any employee. That would be B5, and then B9 is for the um, commercial driver, commercial vehicles. So those were all added as part of Linda's research. And then lastly, we have the uh, fees. 
for Appendix C. Everything in red is the new costs. You can look those over. They went up 3.2%, 3.1, 3.2%. I think I did 3.2 and then we rounded down or up depending on what was uh, the balance was. The big things to note um, following C uh, I just updated and, and we'll make sure Sam has a copy of this. I updated the cost breakdown for zoning board public meetings that went from $550 to $568. Uh, then the real big one after that is the site plan review. And Linda provided the spreadsheet on the cost of site plan reviews from 2023 to 2024, as well as uh, new development costs for 2024. And you will see that the cost went from 700, almost $784 for site plan review in 2023 up to $869 in 2024. And uh, the suggested increase for a site plan review is $500 up to $900. And Linda and I discussed maybe... Yeah. Well, we were eating a lot of the cost. And, and that was, there were some added costs that we thought were going to be there but aren't. So we could go down a little bit, but our cost for a site plan review is at a minimum $869. Okay, we have architect would, fees and then we have the fire inspector fees, too, that had not been included in those before. And then she talked about maybe putting a disclaimer on also that additional unexpected large costs due to overrun may be added. And that, that's kind of a question. Uh, we have a couple examples going on right now in the township mm -hmm. that have required extra inspection. Like on Butchco, when they came in, they paid the $500. We had um, architect fees that we had to pay on top of that. And then Chris Nyhart, you've spent how many hours out of which goes four or five hours? And so that's all time that we're, as the township, the taxpayers are paying. Um, and then again, Slimans, there was a, a change to their interior, and Chris has had to be out there for that too. And that's all over and above what they've paid for, that the township has to pay. And then also attached the, uh, to the <coughs> comparison from 2023 to 2024, the next page is for new development for 2024, and the anticipated cost of a site plan <coughs> review for that is $1,639. So $500 falls very short for that type of a site plan review. And maybe that's where we could recoup the extra large additional cost by having a disclaimer in there. I don't know how we would do that, but it was just a well, thought. It may be an adder. I think, wasn't it Eaton Township that has, I believe <coughs> Eaton Township has in, in their fee schedule uh, for site plan review where they have the option, depending upon uh, the scope of the particular item under review, where they can adjust that amount. They do have, I know for site plan reviews, it was $1,500, and then some of them were 2500 and 3000 Yeah, but I mean, they had listed, I, I believe it was each township, but they talked about this variable um, amount because that's where, I don't recall, it, you or Sam initiated the communication with the prosecutor's office, first off, just to make sure that we had that authority versus yes. setting a fixed fee based on averages, which, you know, then when someone brings in a simple one, you know, the first, why am I paying so much? You know, and theirs may not require that much. Well, if we require an architect every time as... Um, yeah, the difference is if an architect's reviewing something that is simple, 
okay, which you know, maybe is a single, uh, uh, let's say a thousand foot addition on the business versus looking at a large development such as you know what we had here. So you're talking the difference between an hour versus nine hours. And that, that's why one of the other options that we had, um, and it would be a little more complicated, but we could do is if you wanted to keep it down lower, like 600, 700, whatever it is, the cost that you would fix. And then we would have to talk to Tom Horseman when his bill came in that we would add on the fees for the fire inspector and we could add on the architect fees so that it would be a more accurate amount for that particular site plan review. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It would just be a little more paperwork with somebody keeping track of it. And then we'd have to get itemized statements from Chris. And we'd have well, to and that's what you want to look at. You want to make sure that you're not going through additional work. That's why there was a grant a township used to receive that we no longer even apply because they just exactly. kept keeping on so many requirements. We found out we're expending more costs than what we were receiving the grant money where it no longer made it worth it. So we just said we're not even applying for it. I thought I had Eaton's in here. I don't know how to find it. Oh, Eaton did it. So that's the big dilemma right now is what we make the site plan review costs and uh, and then if we put anything else on there. What I find interesting, there was a cluster around that five or six hundred and then fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. Are you talking about our cost that we were saying? Yeah, when you were showing Martin the cost. Lester, when he did for sandstone, he charged us for nine hours to go over all of his um, architectural drawings. Yeah. That came up to $990 alone, and we ate that. The township covered the cost because <coughs> we charged $500 for the development. Yeah. So there was an additional $990 that was not covered. That's why there's a difference. When I talked to Mark Lesner, he said on average for site plan reviews, figure two hours of his time. And for a development, it's about nine hours. That's why there's the big cost difference. There's and then it takes longer for Chris Describe to that as two different kind of site plan reviews. Maybe have a... a we do, we have it broken down. One is the site plan review, and then one is gonna be more of a development <coughs> planning, like, like what Sandstone did when they came in small site plan and a large site plan and these are your these but are your fees even the small site plan review our costs come up to eight hundred and sixty nine dollars with and that's with two hours of an architect and you figure David you sat through those he'll be an hour just in here in the public meeting right not counting what's if been not reviewed more. ahead of time. So what you need, Linda, is for if we just said a standard site plan review maybe we just round that to eight hundred seventy dollars that would know, be the for, easiest and require the least amount of work and then if we can have an addendum in case there are like what did you call them as built like additional um, work that Chris has to do um, that we could add that on at the end and make the people aware that there is potential for an increased amount for the architect or an increased amount for the fire department so I could put that shrink that verbiage down and put yes. that on that same line next to the site plan review cost and and put on that there may be additional overrun costs okay. and then when Just they come in to pay Tom they could and round the standard one right at 870 instead of this you know, okay. 86901 yeah the 900 was with with the additional costs that we thought were there but they really but weren't, they weren't. So right. once those went away it dropped down $30 
Um, and then the new fees will be effective January 1st. And that's all for... That is all for the updates to the policy manual. Um, and just the other notes on here for this organizational meeting, item GG, is just to discuss annual training that we've never quite got around to uh, adding as a policy and having done every year. And the second page also just has notes for things that uh, need to be looked at if there's a new trustee or fiscal officer, a new uh, if fire prevention fees go up and they did not at this time and just a, a list of other updates that should be added to our policy manual at some point in the future so just kind of a history so we don't lose track of what should be done and i'm done Anybody have any questions? Okay, if there's no other questions, I'm going to make a motion to accept the policy manual as amended. <coughs> And the fiscal officer shall send a copy of personnel policy with vacation sick time conversion plan to OPERS for annual approval if required. I know, Chris, I think you said they have been requiring that, but I remember them giving us a tongue lashing years back that we needed to send that to them. So things change. But we'll leave that on there always as an option. That'll be my motion. That's 1227. Yep. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Hearing. Yes. Can I believe, does this whole packet then, is that this is the addendum then, this whole packet that I provided for you? Just so, Chris so we'll just add on there, see addendum. And that would cover all the, so that the changes are all documented yeah, and listed. Yeah, you gave Chris a copy. Yes, she has a copy. All right, I'll make a motion to appoint the fiscal officer as a personal information designee. Second. Lynch? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Then I'll make a motion to authorize the fiscal officer to make supplemental <laughs> appropriations and wire transfers as needed in 2023 and provide and execute all necessary documents effective December 19, 2023 through December 31st, 2023 for the year-end close activity, including but not limited to transfers, advances slash repayments, appropriations, wire transfers, requisitions, travel, bills, payroll-related transactions, and payments and all other necessary and urgent documents as needed with reservation. Second. Lynch? Yes. Uring? Yes. Abraham? Yes. And that's 28, Chris? That is, that's 29. 28 was personal information designee. Okay, you're right. Yep, thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. <coughs> Where did I write that? I'll make a motion. This would be, what, 1230? Twenty-three. Authorize a township administrator, township zoning inspector, and township administrative assistant and media technology operator to attend the OTA Winter Conference and to pay any travel, hotel, and meal expenses associated with the conference. Second. I like that, sir. Pardon? I would like that. No, get your own. Motion, or uh, Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. What I'll do, Chris, after I get the uh, minutes, I'll include that for next year's okay. meeting. So it's on the agenda. Okay. But I'm glad David brought that up. I recall that did come up at the last meeting, too. 
Thank you, David. I'm remembering. <coughs> Just tell me when you're ready, Chris. Oh, I'm ready. Right. And as far as the rental property, we just had this here because in the past, um, Linda pointed out where, you know, with cost increasing, we had to make adjustments in the uh, monthly rent, but we've already just done that recently mm -hmm. with the changeover, so there's no need for any change on that. So our next regular meeting will be on January 9, 2024 at 7 o'clock. I don't know that there's a need for any special meeting other than Chris if anything comes up, you know, whether it's a special emergency meeting between now yeah. and the end of the year, the sooner you let me know, the sooner we can call it. Can I just bring one it. thing up? And, and I've totally forgotten until you just said that. Um, there is a, going to be sometime in the future a commercial driving hour policy that we're going to need to oh, review. Great. Um, that might have to be just a work session to kind of clunk heads and go over things um, just to make sure that we're in compliance. Okay. Okay. So that it doesn't require anything right now. I'm not ready at all to present anything, but it will be probably within the next couple months. Okay. okay. It'll be for updates sometime next year. Yes, for updates for next year. Mid-year or do we have to we can wait till the end of the year? Again. Whenever we can get it done. I forgot about it. I didn't, but I read my notes. Too much. Too much. The meeting is on the 9th? January 9th. That'll be the first one in 2024. And this is the last one in 2024? It's the last one unless something comes up where there's an emergency. And we'll just have to let you know by email and get it posted. Okay, and uh, is there anything else? Any other business? Kevin, did you have something? or? I was just wondering, David, if you come up with something with the, uh, the barns. I got what I thought was a copy of the contract, and I'm looking it over, and they sent me an addendum to the contract, like a contract extension, nothing that mentioned a specific amount. Give me just a, a little bit longer on that, and I'll see if I can come up with a dollar amount. That's really what I'm looking at, is how much they're paying to get what they have done done. And uh, see if that's something that we, we could fit into a to our system or not. That is what it would be. It's a little bit little bit more time, but I know if, I don't want to string this along forever. But I'll have to be get in touch with you on that. I'll see what I can find out over there some more. If I can get the original, which I think is like from twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. But that's where I am with that. I'm I'm working on it. They you they want me to get in touch with you like at the end of next week? Please. please. Okay. Don't be afraid to chase me down on that. I don't recall, David. You did send an email on that. Did you, was Kevin copied on that? I no, and I probably should have. Okay. I probably should have. Now that I think about it after yeah. the fact. But okay. I should have. I should have, Kevin. All right. And then, and remember, the other option is talking with Solid Waste, since now we receive no funds from Solid Waste, is what options they have, since this is keeping it out of the landfill. Okay, if there's no other business, then can I have a motion to adjourn? I just, can I say one thing? Yep. For a December month end, to those of you who turn in timesheets, if you could have them on Thursday morning of 1228, but include hours for all day Thursday, Friday. Yeah, Saturday if you have snow, but we can catch up. But if you could turn them in Thursday morning, that would be great that I could get them processed and ready to go. Okay, I make a motion to I will second. Okay. Abraham? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Lynch? Yes. How 